isn't it interesting that when you have the lens of belief, you can justify almost anything. How is it that when we were believers, we used to watch these shuyuk and these scholars saying these things and we were nodding our heads, we were accepting everything they were saying and we were even agreeing with some of it. Some of it we were troubled by, but of course we justified it because of the religion and because of what the Prophet did and said. Now, when we look at these same things and we look at them critically with the lens of skepticism, when we try to be objective and rational about what's being said, not allowing dogma to get in the way, these things are troubling. I have a video of Sheikh Hamza Yusuf where as I was going through it, I became progressively more troubled by what he was saying. He started off by saying that child marriage, meaning marriage to Aisha, wasn't really a problem because it happened back then. But then later on during the video, he starts to justify what sounds like pedophilia. He starts to justify child marriage. He gives examples that really were uncomfortable and he had this creepy smile when he was saying it. I couldn't believe that this sheikh that used to be beloved to me now sounded like someone that knew Epstein. So, I'm going to share the video with you. This was part of a live stream that I did where I was live responding and reacting to Sheikh Hamza Yusuf watching this video for the first time. And we went through it and we dissected what he said. And you are going to be surprised at just how far he goes to justify this. Beware <laughs> and be prepared. Let's get into it. Still uh, very young. There's khidaf about the age, but in Al Bukhari. Khilaf means difference of opinion. And uh, sorry for the corny Nasheed in the background. This, this is obviously a re-upload, right? He's from Aisha Rabbilan who says that she was six. If you look in the, in the, uh, the history books and look at the year she died and how old she was, there, some of the ulama say that she, uh, she actually uh, was probably 12. Some say 15. But... And those are those are reports. They're just considered weak, which is why he's saying there that the um, تحقيقي, you know that that means the ulama haqqaq al masala, and this is what they think is the soundest position. So there are differences of opinion. One of the things today, obviously, because this is such a strange thing for modern people, uh, there there have been several papers and even booklets written trying to. Uh, prove those other opinions. Now those opinions, like I said, are there that she was 12, that she was 15 uh, when she married the Prophet ﷺ, when the actual contract, and then 15 when, when it was consummated. But if you try to apply a modern template onto, onto this period of time, you'll get a lot of problems because this was a different world. And unless Ah, there we go. This was a different world. Why am I loving what he's saying? Does he not realize that he's also just disqualified Islam from the modern world? By eliminating the behavior and the actions of Muhammad, do you see that they've checkmated themselves? They've trapped themselves in the corner. Actually, Muhammad put himself in the corner, I mean, because I, you can't have it both ways. Either you justify what he did or you don't. And if you don't, he's basically what he's saying can be used against him. That in this case, there's no there's no need to follow Islam in today's days, today's age, right? As, as Hassan Rawan was saying, well, if this didn't apply, what else doesn't apply? Once you recognize that. Uh, you will run into problems in the in the seerah. The Prophet ﷺ was born into a very different world than we are living in now. <laughs> the Prophet was born into a really different world that we're living from now. Uh, Hassan Rawan, Islam is for all times except when we say so. Yeah, exactly. Human nature doesn't change, but norms change. Norms, the araf of people change. In our urf, this would not be acceptable. And this is a masada urfiyah. 
It's it's a, a, a it's a question of orf. It's not, and this is why nobody. So I know it's hard to understand what he's saying. I don't know if he's purposely doing this to make it sound like intellectual or something. He's saying it's an orf, which means it's a like um a custom. It's it's like the culture or something. He's trying to say this is based on the culture. It's it's relative from culture to culture. Found this strange, even when uh, Washington Irving. Who wrote his book on the Prophet? Uh, the famous people who know Washington Irving. He wrote a book on the Prophet Sallallahu and one of the uh, one of the um, uh, he wrote the Alhambra Tales of the Alhambra, and he wrote uh, Rip Van Winkle. People know him from that. But he wrote a life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and in that life, he mentions that he married Aisha and consummated the marriage at nine, and then he says. But women of the desert are very precocious. So this is the 1830s. So again, he's trying to say how um, this wasn't an issue. This was uh, people of Arabia. He, it's it's back to the anthropological argument again. People that are describing non-Muslims, especially describing what Muhammad did back then, without any. Um, intention to malign especially you know they're just describing it they're just going to describe it as it and say yeah well that's what happened back then like oh, like whatever then they they're not making an implication that it was okay today and like he even he's actually he's going even stronger on the side of um this is not something we should do today it was different back then it was a different world back then i'm i'm really loving that he's saying this i don't know if he realizes just how bad it is for him and, and about the age thing we can we'll, we'll, we'll quickly go through that in a bit an american that does not use it as a means of attacking the prophet because in 1830 america 12 year olds it was quite normal for a girl of 12 or 13 to get married in 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 america today there are states and there's somebody from alabama here i'm not making any jokes about alabama but there are states where it's permissible to marry uh a 13 year old a 12 year old with consent you know adult consent but people used to get married when when, when the period came a, a, a girl was biologically capable of having children now if we look also it's important to note that Aisha anha, is by no means an ordinary person and she is one of the most extraordinary women that has ever lived anybody that does a a study of her life will conclude that not only was she a genius, clearly. I mean, I mean, you know, you can look at a person. It's very strange for people that study American history. You have to ask, how is it possible that all these men were living at the same time? You know, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and, and Alexander Hamilton, very unusual people to be living at the same time because we don't have that. So, if, but if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu the people around him and th that he was given as companions, it's just, it's beyond belief. It's so extraordinary. I mean, it's not beyond belief. I meant to be Dahi Rasuli, but it is extraordinary. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, I wasn't sure if he was going to expand on that. Um, she has would strongly disagree. <laughs> he, he's, uh, his companions were pretty, pretty bad. I don't know what he's talking about. They're the type of, oi, I mean, they did like some horrible, cruel things. I mean, like burning people alive and like, I like, do we really need to say how amazing they were? Like these guys were basically... I, I don't know if I should say warmongers, but I mean, basically like that, that's what these guys, you know, Khalid bin Walid and Omar and Abu Bakr. And, you know, they wanted to fight all of these Arab tribes until they would pay the jizya, not the jizya, the, the zakat, right? I mean, when Muhammad died, they all became apostates because they didn't want to pay this money, right? So yeah, it's, these guys were not great. I mean, I wish I could, I, I, I'd say not even sheep, even some of them were very opportunistic. You know what I mean? So opportunistic people, not even necessarily sheep, not even necessarily. His 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 uh, his marrying Aisha is uh, very significant. She transmits a third of the religion, uh, according to uh, you know. In in fiqh, she gives us so many messiahs. She solved many of the problems. Uh, the, the funny thing is. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm laughing because he said she transmitted so many hadith. But he was kind of like, you know, shrugging off the hadith about her being nine, which was translated by her. Not translated, transmitted by her. <laughs> so if you want to... The, the same Muslims that want to brag... Um, sorry. The, the same Muslims that want to brag that Aisha narrated so many hadith, they also have to admit that she's nine because that like, some of the hadith include the fact that she was six when she was married and nine when it was consummated. That's her hadith, right? So you can't have it both ways again, you know? She was also a brilliant poet, uh, a rawiyah of poetry. She knew all the jihadi poetry and she was raised in the Prophet's house. So she, she would have learned that in the... <laughs> she was literally raised in his house as in like child groomed <laughs> you know what i mean like she was raised <laughs> meaning <laughs> she grew up <laughs> in his house because she was a child <laughs> he got me there <laughs> in the prophet sallallahu house she was an asaba she was a genealogist she knew the lineage of the arabs she was also somebody who um was very very uh independent in her being uh, she had that's true. She was so independent that she started a war against Ali, <laughs> the the cousin and the son-in-law of the Prophet, the wife of the Prophet. She's so independent. She started a war that she ultimately lost, and she ended up being captured as war booty by the by Ali. <laughs> you just imagine the, the the like. Imagine how messed up that is. Within a lifetime of Muhammad dying. His wife is captured as war booty. Of course, they, no one took her as war booty because that was his wife, ex-wife. She, I mean, widower, widow. But I mean, just just imagine like how how messed up that is. And ultimately, that was like in a way that was to her downfall, what she did, right? Studying this battle. But anyways, that's that's a mess. That's a that's the human situation there, right? It's just, it's just a big mess. It's a big mess. It's just that's that's what you find with human man-made religions. I mean, that's that's all we have is mess. Had her own opinions about things, and she's not suffer fools lightly. She, um, she's she's just a, she's a stunning, extraordinary uh, woman in human history, and so. You know, this idea, this attack on the Prophet Sallallahu today is really quite, it's, 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 it's just an odious, vile, contemptible a smear of his personality, of his honor. And none of us should be in any way, shape or form embarrassed by this, but it needs to be understood within the context of the time, the place and the people. Now, I asked the chief rabbi of one of the chief rabbis of Israel um, I, at a conference I was at in Europe. I asked him in the Torah, in the Talmud, which is their kind of book of narrations and fiqh, and they have all their masail in there. And I asked him, what, what is the youngest that you can marry a, a child for an adult to marry? And he said, there's difference of opinion. They're like us, three rabbis, four opinions. Um, and, and he... Uh, He's and we have that too. Three imams, four opinions. Because a lot of imams will have two opinions on something, especially Ahmed ibn Hamba. Um, he has a lot of masail where they don't know the tarjih. They'll have two opinions, so they'll literally narrate them as two opinions. Um, so he he told me he said six is 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 generally the earliest, and then and then. Okay, I'm I'm having a really tough time believing him here. I I don't believe him. I'm sorry to say I don't believe him. And the reason why I don't believe him is because I did some research on this before. And again, I didn't dig deep. But at least on Wikipedia, they give an age that's much more than six. Six sounds a little bit too convenient. A little bit too convenient that he said six. What's more common, I think, I think the minimum they said on Wikipedia for Judaism was um, 13 or something. Basically, um, age of puberty is what they mostly go by. So, yeah, like, like really, six years old, like they said six and that's the exact age that Aisha got. Come on, like, who are you fooling, man? Who's, who's the name? What's this guy's name?
Let's let's hear what the guy's name is. It's it's just an ode personality of his honor, and I, none of us should be in any way, shape, or form embarrassed by this. But it needs to be understood within the context of the time, the place, and the people. Now, I asked the chief rabbi of one of the chief rabbis of Israel um, I, at a conference I was at in Europe. I asked him in the Torah. Uh, he didn't mention the name. He went from chief rabbi of Israel to one of the chief rabbis. And I mean, yes, we've we've been saying this since the beginning that we don't care what other religious, what other cultures, like that's not the point. We have objective signs to show us why this is harmful. Even if it is six in Judaism, that's not whatever. Like it's the religion's older than Islam. I wouldn't even be surprised. But like, it's just funny. It's just funny that it was exactly six. He didn't give any names. I mean, these are what you call red flags. When somebody is lying, this is the type of way they say things. Like, yeah, I was talking to this guy, and uh, actually, not that guy, but another guy. And I asked him, what, what's the age? Uh, what's the age? Uh, it was six. Like, really? Like, it, it, it's just uh, it's just a little bit too convenient. It's just a little bit too freaking convenient. Even if it is true, which I highly doubt it. But anyways. Torah in the Talmud, which is their kind of book of narrations and fiqh. And they have all their masail in there. And I asked him, what what is the youngest that you can marry a a child for an adult to marry? And he said, "There's difference of opinion. They're like us, three rabbis, four opinions." Um, and and he uh, he's and we have that too, three imams, four opinions, because a lot of imams will have two opinions on something, especially Ahmed ibn Hamza. Um, he has a lot of masail where they don't know the tarjih. They'll have two opinions, so they'll literally narrate them as two opinions. <laughs> I love the dig at Ahmed bin Humble. These guys don't like Hanbalis, right? Because they're very like literal and stuff. Uh, that's funny. Um, so he he told me he said six is 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 generally the earliest. And then, and then I said, uh, and what about consummation? He said nine. And then I said, well, what do they do now? He said, do you believe this? He said six and nine. Okay, Hamza Yusuf is taking us for fools now. Okay, that's just a little bit too much. Okay, I was like a little bit skeptical. But now I'm like full blown, dude is lying. Dude is lying. There's just no way. There's no way. There's no way the guy said you can marry them at six and consummate it at nine. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a rabbit. <laughs> it was a rabbit. He was on LSD and he saw a rabbit that was talking to him. He's like, he thought it was a rabbi. The rabbit told him six and nine. Yo, like, cut the, cut the cap, man. No rabbi told you this. This is bull. This is for sure a lie. This is for sure, for sure a lie. He said, well, most rabbis, they'd have to be at least 13 uh, before they would do the marriage. So, again, it's a orf. So, if you're looking at the Jewish tradition itself, they have the same laws in their tradition. And they know that this is a pre-modern uh, norm. So even though the modern society, I would not personally be happy for anybody in the West to marry a girl that was under 15. You know. Oh, snap. I, I feel like we need to play that again. So even though the modern society, I would not personally be happy for anybody in the West to marry a girl that was under 15. You know. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now it depends if she's in the West. <laughs> this Islam is like constantly changing and like, it's like the time was different back then. The West is different. The hot sun is different. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> this is just comical. You know, 
at times like this, after watching stuff like this, and I always think back on how people ask me, you know, why don't you become Muslim again? Or is it a chance to become? And I'm just like, do you guys, you guys don't even know. Like someone's asking, you don't even realize how broken Islam is. It's so dismantled, broken, fallen apart. It's in pieces. The pieces are in pieces. The holes are not even holes. It's like the pieces are holes. Like the holes are like everywhere. Like it's just like, it's not even Swiss cheese. It's like <laughs> the holes in the Swiss cheese is, is what you have left now. It's that's That's how bad it is. <clears throat> There's no way. There's just no way this is from God. There's no way. This entire religion is man-made from the beginning to the end. The entire thing, even if you believe the Quran's from God, the entire thing is man-made, basically, calculations and assumptions and interpretations. There's no way. There's just no way to, to make this work anymore. You can't put the genie back in the lamp. It's just so done. So done. And this one topic alone you know, shows you just how bad it is. It's like asking if you can put tooth toothpaste back in the tube. Exactly. Right? It's just like, thank you for the super chat. Ultra. Okay, let's let's finish the video. No. Um, I don't I don't think it would be uh, appropriate in our environment or conditions. But it you know, there are girls now in America that are 12, 13 having children. And I go again about America. Dude, America is not the end all and heal all of everything. We don't we don't worship America despite what you guys think. Okay, America has its problems. We get that. I mean, just look at the recent news, right? Yeah, like I think people are starting to realize that what he's saying is just a little bit too convenient for words. I just feel sad that he's such a he's lying like this. He's just lying to these people. It just makes me mad. Okay, Nim Glace, Abdullah, you were Muslim. How did you justify this crap then? Uh, a lot of the crap I justified was by listening um, <clears throat> to these guys and not being critical about it. I didn't have my critical hat on. You know, a lot of times, unless somebody points out to you that this is something that you need to question, you don't question it because Hamza Yusuf, like in another video, I just, I don't know, I just randomly found this one. I don't know why. But in another video he has, he's like crying and he's like, I don't need to justify Muhammad, what he did to Aisha, you know, Aisha. I think I even responded. I did a response video to that, actually. And it's just like, yeah, this is you guys have to justify. I, you know, I believe God told him to do this. You know, God showed him this, whatever, whatever. So why do I need to justify this? I don't need to justify this. Right? Um, that's kind of like how I was. And I wasn't critical. It's, you know, the floodgates open up when you start when you start questioning. When you start thinking about it, when you start looking into it, you start to realize, holy crap, this is like pretty bad. And thank you guys all for the likes. Appreciate it. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I forgot to point out that um, this is a new channel. It's been running for a few years now, but um, you know, I still have a bunch of subscribers. I haven't moved over. Even yesterday, last week, I had someone mention to me, I didn't know you had a new channel. <laughs> I was like, I've been uploading on this channel for a long time now. So, yeah, uh, you stay dumb. One of the comments says you stay dumb because the Muslim way of thinking is do not question anything. Do not criticize anything. Do not freely think for yourself. Yeah, basically, you know, I see this even more so among certain communities more than others. So, for example, in the Desi sort of Sufi community, Sufi slash non-Salafi people that follow Madhabs, when I, when I bring up some of the points, they always, almost instantly, they come up with let's go talk to the Molana. Let's go talk to Molvi Saab at the masjid, right? Molvi Saab, who doesn't know the first thing about any of this stuff. He has no clue about these issues. He's going to help me. He's going to help you. <laughs> Give me a break. But this is what happens. Like, they they don't, they're like, yeah, it kind of sounds like bad what you're saying. But yeah, the, the sheikh will have an answer for you. And that's it. That's the done. They don't even care. They're just like, accept it like that. And it's just whatever, right? They don't want to dig any deeper. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to think about it. It is what it is. So that's how it was for me, too. We're talking, he's talking about, uh, yeah, it's Allah's image. <laughs> We're talking about young girls and guys getting, having sex, like premarital sex or whatever. Nobody's saying this is a good thing. It's not a good thing, if you ask me. I'm not in public health, but I can tell you, I've read some books on this topic, and it's not a good thing if you're not emotionally and physically mature. Young, my kids, I would encourage them, highly encourage them to delay 
having sex until much, you know, until the they understand what they're getting into. They're ready for the consequences, potential consequences, having a child and whatever, right? There needs to be, you know, some proper commitment between the 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 couple. They need they need to be like a proper stable relationship because you don't want them breaking up and having kids and abortions and all of these things. You don't want that, right? So that there needs to be some so and if you ask Hamza Yusuf, is that a good thing what you're saying? Clearly, he's going to say that's not a good thing. But he's saying this is a good thing in Muhammad's case. Like, again, you're having your cake and eating it too. You have your so-called rabbi that said six and nine. And now, now you're trying to say that uh, these guys are a snake oil salesmen. Like, we can, does anyone not see that now? Like, does everyone see that? These are snake oil salesmen. They they are coming up with any sort of off, the, uh, obfuscating the issue the the basically trying to make it you know all these like arguments about why it's okay but half of the things they're saying they themselves are not okay with he wouldn't let his child get married married even not just sex not he wouldn't even let his own child his own daughter get married yet he's trying to say like as if this is like yeah this is what's happening nowadays like as if it, this makes it okay that's the unspoken thing he's trying to say that it's okay because of this so there was a super chat i'm just gonna Okay, the okay. I, I almost forgot the super chat. So let's <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the super chat and the comments. America, beautiful comment from Camso. America is not receiving anything from God. It's a man-made ideology. Exactly. You guys are claiming you have it from God, right? Uh John Stopman saying you went up from 25.7 to 26k subscribers. Yay, yes, it's going well. It's 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 getting there. Uh Hassan Arwan, when I was a Muslim, I used to put difficult issues in a box called God will explain later. My faith in the whole enabled me to give a free pass to difficult issues. That's exactly what happened to one of my friends too, that when I was leaving Islam, I was talking to him about these issues. And then he said, okay, look, I can answer some of your questions, but like the other ones, I, again, I'm t I have a leap of faith box. That's what he did. Same as like how Hassan said it. It was like, yeah, I'm, I basically have faith overall in Islam and Muhammad. So these things I can't explain, I'm just going to, and I asked him, I said, okay, what if I come up with something else that I can, do you want to talk about? He's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. So he, he was willing to help me out and explain to me why he thinks that this was actually bad and whatnot. But like the things that, why I was wrong, I mean, about my doubts in Islam, but but he didn't want to continue the conversation because he wasn't, he was done with it. He'd, he'd made peace with it. And he was like, okay, now I'm done. I'm just not, I'm just not, I don't want to think about it anymore. Okay, let me let me do it again, just in case. So even though the modern society, I would not personally be happy for anybody in the West to marry a girl that was under fifteen. You know, um, I don't I don't think it would be uh, appropriate in our environment or conditions. But it, you know, there are girls now in America that are twelve, thirteen, having children, and they're having sex at you know 10 now so the, the you know these are this why does he have a big smile on his face when he's talking about this this is such a weird look like do you guys see how like creepy this looks like what you're smiling when you're talking about this like you're some like i don't i don't think it would be uh appropriate in our environment or conditions but it you know, there are girls now in America that are 12, 13, having children. And they're having sex at, you know, 10 now. So, the, the, you know, these are, this, this is, there's a book by Robert Epstein called The Case Against Adolescence. And he's arguing that you need to start treat, treating young people more like adults because they really are adults. And it's treating them like children that causes all this adolescent behavior. And, uh, oh my goodness again trying to make kids into adults can you guys leave kids alone please like seriously can you just leave <laughs> leave our damn kids and let them be kids <laughs> we don't want kids to be adults man life is freaking horrible enough and painful enough as it is let them enjoy their childhood let them have some fun in life let them you know do some shit and like not have to worry about responsibilities god i hate this like oh man i i i not i don't like to um yeah not not kids just little girls leave like specifically little girls are focusing on right 
and and this i hate to say this but like you know he sounds like a predator it's true he's the things he's saying is like it's in, it's like you 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 try the, on one hand he's saying islam is <clears throat> you know shouldn't do this thing in today's age that day was different now he's going on about all these things that are happening today as if it's a justification make up your mind dude if you think it's bad it's bad then why are you using this what about it if it's not bad yeah and he said the book was in by epstein i think that's a different epstein not the same epstein <laughs> oh dear oh man let kids have let kids be kids yeah and and he's obviously um over exaggerating the situation this is not i don't think this is that common um but anyways maybe it is i don't know whatever i i don't have time to look it up i don't want to like boil you guys by google that you guys can google that if you want and see if this is actually the case uh, he has a lot of social science to back up his views people forget also uh, the 50 60 years ago in the united states it was quite common for again again he's justifying it i'm just going to read some comments alzia said sorry i'm pronouncing a name wrong alizia exactly he's condemning it and then trying to find cases to justify it by telling people to treat six-year-olds as adults this is exactly what's happening right it's like yo what like yeah, he said so many books to justify child marriages. <laughs> Creepy. Exactly. It's like, what are you, what are you saying, man? Like, make up your mind. Girls 14 to get married. Uh, for people that know uh, William Durant's work, Muriel Durant is the his wife. He married her when he was, I think, in his early 30s, and she was, I think, 13 years old. And she became a world-class historian under his tutelage and co-wrote that book, The Story of Civilization, uh, which I think is still in print. So, so are you justifying child grooming so we can get nice books? Uh, dude, I'm just going to rewind what he said because it's, yeah, as, as Hassan Radwan said, it's a scattergun approach, hoping one of the things he says stays. I'm just going to the wind. I hate this background music. I hate it. I hate when they do this. I just, I want to listen to the, but it's not only Islamic channels. Sometimes they put music on regular channels too. I just want to hear the guy talk. Like if I'm here coming to hear a lecture, I'm, I don't want in the background. It's annoying, right? Uh, but let me, let me just, uh, I'm just going to rewind what he just said. Because it, it literally sounds like he's justifying pedophilia. Like it, it, that's exactly what it sounded like. Just let me rewind so I'm, I'm not being unfair. Muriel Durant is the his wife. He married her when he was, I think, in his early 30s. And she was, I think, 13 years old. And she became a world-class historian under his tutelage. Okay, he's definitely justifying pedophilia now. Hamza Yusuf has now become a pedophilia apologist, like literally justifying pedophilia. He just said, this 30 year old guy made a 13 year old and she became a will. Look at the big smile on his face. Like, this guy belongs in the FLDS, seriously. Like this is like, <sighs> I wanna show you guys something, something I read because it's, it's like a counterpoint to his stupidity. It's his, this nonsense. This guy, I read about this guy in one of the books I'm reading. I forgot which book I read. Anyways, Laszlo Polga, the man who raised three child prodigy, prodigies. Not three child wives. Guys, read this. Child prodigies, meaning his kids, not his wives. Okay, get it straight, Hamzi Yusuf. This guy was a researcher from Hungary who studied intelligence, had a fascination with understanding geniuses. He, oh, yeah, this was on the book on grit. The book is called Grit. Anyways, so what he did was he raised his, ki his kids from a very young age to become masters of chess. This is one example. Susan Polga, second daughter, Sophia Polga. And each daughter consecutively became better and better. She, the first daughter was a top-ranked player. The second daughter 
became the sixth top female chess player. I don't know why chess matters male and female, but it seems to be a difference there. But anyways, the third daughter became the best female chess player in history. And she, he did not, he's not sleeping with her. Okay. This is not his wife. This is his daughter. If I, if this is like, this is a strong enough counterpoint to make the point that you don't need to marry children to have child pro I mean, like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? What am I hearing? I, I, I wasn't expecting this. I didn't even listen to this whole video before doing this presentation because I was like, yeah, he's going to say some things. But like what he's saying is super, super bad now. He's justifying a marriage to a child because that's what his prophet did. After saying you don't need to marry, this, this, this is not applicable anymore. We don't do this anymore. Now this old dude, I mean, it's not even as old as Muhammad. He was 30, he said. Married a 13-year-old. Again, not as young as, again, the situation is not even as extreme as Muhammad. But this, you can't justify this shit, dude. You cannot justify child marriage. Why are you justifying it? Why are you being a pedo man? <laughs> I mean, like, this is bad. And co-wrote that book, The Story of Civilization, uh, which I think is still in print. So... He says this is not this should not be done in this day and age, and then in the same breath he says to justify in this day and age. Frankly, I have more respect for how line Salafis would say it as it is exactly. What is this nonsense? You know, even in our own culture, we do have uh, we do have that in our past, but not. How can a Greek person with ancestors with Aristotle and Plato stoops to such lows? I know it's just like, oh man, it's, I don't think he hears himself. This is like so bad. Oh man, oh dear, like <sighs> this is awful, 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 awful. Not in our present, and that's why it's for some people that's a little difficult. Anyway, I you know, I, I elaborated on that just because it is an issue that does come up. But I think it's very important to recognize that Aisha Radilano by merely reading the hadith with Aisha, you will come very quickly to recognize that this was not a, a, a little girl. This was a very dynamic, mature, young uh, woman who stood her own ground with the Prophet him himself, disagreed with Yeah, uh, like a young girl had to stand her own ground against a grown-up man, according to your, you know, thinking, just, which, is, which was justified. Like, is that how it should be? Shouldn't you marry a woman that's your age or like closer to your age? that at least has rage, reached the age of consent? Nope, there's no idea. There's no concept of consent back then, right? With him on more than one occasion. If you want to know the level of her erudition, um, for those who know Arabic, the hadith of Umm Zara uh, will show you the type of erudition. Yeah, Hamza Yusuf is a teacher. Yeah, this comment is really good. Uh, a six-year-old woman. Yeah, exactly. It's a six-year-old girl not a woman she wasn't a woman at six give me a break when you surround yourself with psychopaths and yes men you're unable to see the absurdity of what you're saying that's exactly true and this is a great comment uh this one authentically superficial said yeah she stood the ground and he beat her in the chest yeah at least one example we have of that right thanks for watching if you like this video don't forget to subscribe thumbs up leave a comment and to my patrons thank you so much for your continued support and thank you for watching this is your friendly Ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.